Bob Menendez has been found guilty on a federal corruption trial. In this video, I'm going to be going over an article by CNN explaining what this means, what this means for the future of Bob Menendez and the sentence in New Jersey, and how that plays overall into the bigger picture for the 2024 United States Senate elections. So first things first, as the headline says, Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey was found guilty on federal corruption charges in a trial yesterday afternoon. So, what happened? A jury on Tuesday, this is going to be me reading directly from the article, I want to be as accurate as possible on this. A jury on Tuesday found Senator Bob Menendez guilty on all counts in his federal corruption trial. And also, after this verdict, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer swiftly called on his Democratic colleague to resign. Menendez, who is, as I mentioned, from New Jersey, was convicted of 16 counts including bribery, extortion, wire fraud, obstruction of justice, and acting as a foreign agent for his role in a year-long bribery scheme, or years-long bribery scheme. The verdict, and this is again quoting from the article directly, is a staggering blow for the Democratic establishment in New Jersey, where longtime state power broker George Norcross faces a separate racketeering indictment and a stain on the party's national brand. Menendez, one of the most feared and influential figures in state politics, now faces decades in prison and further questions about how he wielded his power as the former chairman of Foreign Relations Committee. Menendez said, quote, Obviously, I'm deeply, deeply disappointed by the jury's decision. Menendez told reporters outside of the courtroom, I have every faith that the law and the facts did not sustain that decision and that he'll be successful upon appeal. Menendez is, set, is supposed to be sentenced on October 29th, and he maintains he never violated his public oath and has never been anything but a patriot of my country and for my country. In situations and cases like these involving uh, politicians and getting fouled for corruption charges, it's very important to take things slow and be as precise with information as possible. That's why I'm going sentence by sentence here. To paint the full picture, being accurate is very, very important. I have never been, ever been a foreign agent, and the decision rendered by the jury today would put at risk every member of the U.S. Senate in terms of what they think a foreign agent would be. Damian Williams, the U.S. Attorney for Southern District of New York, said after the verdict, this wasn't politics as usual, this was politics for profit. Menendez appeared to shake his head when the first guilty verdict against him was read. When the jury was finished, he leaned his elbows on the defense table with his hands clasped in front of his face. When the court officer announced there was a verdict and parties piled in, both Menendez's daughter, Alicia Menendez, and his sister sat in silence. Looking straight ahead and not speaking, they seemed to embrace one another. Once another. As the senator left the courtroom, he walked over to his sister and daughter, spoke to them for a minute, and left. They all had serious expressions on their faces. Menendez's look was stern. So, now we get on to the part where I think most fits in with the um, overall discussion of my channel itself, which is how it impacts the upcoming 2024 Senate races. As fascinating as uh, political law and, ele and election law and campaign finance law is, for me, I more am interested in the electoral side when it comes to how this will affect the 2024 elections. And Menendez's case sparked a revolt among rank-and-file Democrats who are traditionally part of the state machine in New Jersey, which has for decades run roughshod over outsider candidates. There's always been Democrats who tried to run against Menendez and also against other Democrats in New Jersey, but typically the incumbents do very well when it comes to the primary. The race to replace him would shortly be with Menendez being indicted, initially included the first lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy, and the surge of her, of her from county party bosses, over the more popular rep Andy Kim, who is now the nominee for the Democratic Senate. I'll be going over this race a little bit later in the video as well, but Andy Kim is now the Democrat running to succeed Menendez in this race. However, that doesn't mean Menendez is not running, it's just things get a little more complicated. I'll begin to that as well. Kim said in a statement, This is a sad and somber day for New Jersey and our country. Our public servants should work for the people, and today we saw the Judge Senator Menendez as guilty and unfit to serve. I called on Senator Menendez to step down from these charges were first made public, and now that he's been found guilty, I believe the only course of action for him is to resign his seat immediately. The people of New Jersey deserve better. 
So as I mentioned, Menendez is still running for the race as an independent as of right now. And he's running against the Democrat, Andy Kim, and the Republican nominee, Curtis Bashaw. And the fear, I think, among some Democrats is that if Menendez stays in this race, he still may be able to be get maybe like 10, 15% of the vote or so that would provide an opportunity where the race will be much closer than expected, where maybe the Republican nominee, if they gain all the usual support that a Republican would get, may be able to eke out a narrow victory in New Jersey. And as I'll be going over the map in just a few minutes, it's definitely not good considering how close the Senate elections will be in this election cycle. Chuck Schumer, who is the uh, Senate majority leader in uh, the Senate, obviously, he'd previously refused to weigh in on whether Menendez should step down. And after this verdict came out, he immediately released a statement after the verdict was announced, saying that Menendez must do what is right for his constituents in the Senate and our country and resign. And from Menendez's home state, the governor, Phil Murphy, and Senator Cory Booker, both Democrats, who reiterated their previous calls for Menendez to step down, and many Democrats on Capitol Hill followed Schumer's lead, including the Judiciary Chairman Majority Whip Dick Durbin. And if Menendez doesn't resign, it would take a two-thirds vote in the Senate to remove him. That was said by the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy himself. So this article goes on for a little bit longer, and there's a lot more other information about the case and the specifics of it itself. But I'm going to stop there for the sake of the video because I want to get into the electoral side. So Menendez is definitely in hot water right now. In 2018, which was the first election that I ever went over, was the 2018 elections. But uh, Bob Menendez, who was at the time facing scandal as well, and it may have been related to this, I'm not exactly sure. But he was facing a scandal at some, uh, at some time that questioned whether or not he would be able to win this race. There were concerns that maybe... Bob Hugan was more of a moderate-ish Republican, and Bob Menendez's scandal would make the race a little bit closer. And I'm going to scroll down here to the polls. The race was listed as likely D, lean D, but the Click Poll Report made it toss-up. And as you can see, in every single poll, Menendez was winning. The only question was what was the margins. Of course, you see polls like Quinnipiac and Vox Popley, where Menendez is over 50%. That's obviously very good news. But you see a poll by Emerson that shows Menendez at 47 to 42%. Of course, you'd still rather be winning than losing. But it's a little bit concerning when you're the Democratic incumbent in New Jersey in such a Democratic state and you're not breaking 50% of the vote. It's a little bit concerning. The only thing to look at here, though, is the, mar or is the sample size of the poll wasn't that big. It was only 659. But nonetheless, it definitely looked like Bob Menendez was favored. But if he had a very bad night, there could have been a potential opening. For maybe Hugin to rise up and potentially try and steal this race. However, as we saw in the last few days leading up to the election, aside from the Emerson poll, every single poll had Menendez above 50% of the vote, and he went on to win, as I showed you at the top of the video, with 54%. So the final few polls were actually very accurate. Now we go to 2024. Bob Menendez announced it, there's some polling data that shows Bob Menendez is not going to win the Democratic primary. There's just not. So what happens? Well, first things first, when he's facing all these corruption charges, several Democrats are telling Bob Menendez not to run for re-election and to basically resign a Senate race. Bob Menendez has remained adamant that he was not going to do that and he was running for re-election, but the writing was on the wall that he was going to lose the Democratic primary, similar to what Kirsten Sinema did in Arizona, where she knew she was not going to win the Democratic primary. However, instead of saying they won't run for re-election like Sinema did, Menendez said he's going to run for Senate as an independent and still be on the ballot, setting up a three-way race of Bob Menendez versus Democrat Andy Kim and Republicans Curtis Bashaw. So Menendez, despite all this, has, or has con been consistent in saying he is innocent and he is and will running for re-election. So now we get to the state of the race right now. All the major political uh, election websites, Cook Political Report, Inside Elections, Sabado's Crystal Ball, which I went over a few days ago, Decision Desk, HQ, The Hill, lots of really great election website and resources that if you've not checked out and are curious about them, I highly encourage you to go check them out. If you can't find the links or anything, you can go on Wikipedia like I am now, look up the Senate race, and you can find the links to all of these on this page. I think they're all very great resources that I know I use from time to time. This race is listed as safe D and solid D. So what's the concern then? If it's such a safe race, what's the concern? 
Well, there hasn't been much polling do polling data done so far, but when I look at these polls that have been done, this does not suggest this is 100% a safe Democratic race, at least not right now. There's been three polls done, one by a university and two by Republican-aligned polls. So again, not a ton of polls and not exactly the most like trustworthy sourcing of polls, but only a two-point lead for Andy Kim over the Republican here, about a six-point lead over the Republican in this poll, and about a six-point lead over the Republican in this poll. So why does that matter so much? The Democrats winning, the Democrat is winning, so why is it a concern? Well, there's a lot of undecided vote. And Bob Menendez, despite this corruption charges, is still technically the incumbent. What if people who maybe aren't as kept up with the news see Menendez's name and say, oh, I voted for him like two or three times now, I'm going to vote for him again. That undecided vote could then eke into Menendez's support, maybe get him up to like 15, 10, or 20% of the vote. Andy Kim's percentage, 35, 39, stays the same. And maybe Curtis Bashaw's support goes up to 40, 41, 42%, similar to what Hugin got in 2018. Well, in that scenario, both the Democrat and Menendez would be getting close to about 30% of the vote or less, whereas the Republicans would be getting close to 40%. The Republican may be able to just get lucky enough and win the race. Because I think if we saw an Andy Kim versus Curtis Bashaw race head-to-head, -head, it's no secret Andy Kim is winning this race, and it's probably not even going to be that close. At least over 10 points like we saw in 2018. In a three-way race, depending on how Menendez performs, that could potentially make things a Republican upset. Not saying it will, because I think given how many Democratic voters there are in New Jersey, even in a three-way race, the odds of the Republican winning are not that good. You can't rule it out 100%. There is a very, very slim chance, like maybe like a 5% chance even, that the Republican could pull off an upset if Kim and Menendez both run, which is why you see Chuck Schumer and some other Democrats calling for Menendez to resign, because they can't risk having the Senate seat potentially fall to a Republican, or at very least, spend money on this race to ensure the Republican does not win, because they're already likely going to have to do that in Maryland. They don't want to have to spend money in Maryland and New Jersey when there's Democratic incumbents in vulnerable states that may vote for Donald Trump, like in Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Montana. These places need to be focused by Democrats if they want to try to hold the set, their Senate majority. They can't afford to spend time and money in New Jersey. And I'll show you a little bit more what I mean by this. So this is the first time I've gone over the Senate map for this election in a video. But what I have right now is Republicans are safe or likely at 50 Senate seats in the new Senate for the 2025 session beginning then. Democrats have about 43. With Virginia and Maryland, I have rated as likely Democrat for now. Minnesota was closed, but I put that in safe Democrat as well. And also Vermont and Maine, which are two independents, caucus with the Democrats, so I put them in the Democratic column. So depending on how the 2020 election goes, the Republicans, if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance win the election, then the Republicans already have the Senate majority just by holding this map right now. But let's say even if Joe Biden or Kamala Harris wins, the Senate would be the same composition now where it'd be tied if New Jersey becomes a toss-up, or even if Menendez takes enough of the vote away where the Republican is able to eke out a narrow victory, that gives the Republicans the Senate majority. And that's without flipping Ohio or Montana, which are two vulnerable Democratic incumbents in Sherrod Brown and John Tester, and states that voted for Donald Trump by double digits in 2020. It's possible that if the Republicans have a very good night, they may win Montana and Ohio. But if they win New Jersey they may not even need it, which is why the Democrats are so concerned that they have to hold New Jersey. But let's run the table for the Democrats. Again, just to reiterate the same point, Nevada, Arizona, Montana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and let's say Sherrod Brown can survive in Ohio. If the, if the Republicans win New Jersey because Menendez stays in the race and splits votes away from Andy Kim, it's all, or Andy Kim, it's all for nothing. Unless the Democrats can try and pull an upset in Texas or Florida. And even still, if New Jersey goes red, if Donald Trump wins the presidency, winning Texas and Florida, they would have to win them both to hold the majority if, they're, if Trump wins. Obviously, I don't think that's going to happen. I have both of them as likely Republican right now. And I'd be closer to putting it in safe Republican than the Democratic home. But the point I'm making here is this Senate election is so close, Democrats cannot afford to lose New Jersey. 
So that is going to do it for today's video. I thought it would be very interesting to go over this because, you know, this is the type of stuff that in a very close election, you don't think about it too much. But then on election night, if this is a very close race in New Jersey, like say Cam only ends up winning it by a few points or so, that may mean the Democrats have to spend a little bit of time and money in this state, which could hurt other Democrats like in Ohio or Montana, or states where Trump right now is doing very well in the polls, like Nevada, and Trump's doing pretty well in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. For these Democratic incumbents or Democratic challengers to survive, there has to be all hands on deck for the Democrats. And I'm not sure New Jersey being a close competitive race is exactly what they need right now. They need quite the opposite. If we're a Republican in New Jersey, I mean, this cannot, go, this cannot be going better for you right now. Is keep propping up the Republican candidate and hoping that Kim and Menendez continue to try to basically eat each other alive in terms of elections and trying to get elected. So that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in a future video.